Welcome back to the AgriLand Pavilion Stand at 305 at the 2023 National Plowing Championships. I'm joined by Jim O'Toole, the Chief Executive of Board Bea, and Professor Frank O'Mara from Chagas. You're very welcome here Thank today. You. Now, we've got a glimpse of sunshine here at the moment, Jim. So maybe you'll tell us how the sun may be shining on Irish farmers, thanks to Board Bea. Oh, God bless us. What an intro. Um, well, <laughs> we, we certainly uh, are, are working hard to try and uh, spread the good word about uh, Irish food and drink uh, around the world. As you know, I'm just back uh, last week from a trade mission with the Minister to West Africa. Uh, so we have uh, promotional activity going on uh, around Europe. We're doing promotion on the home market. Uh, so uh, it's, it's, as we all know, it's a, it's a difficult enough uh, market environment out there. But uh, Board Bia and our offices in 14 locations around the world are uh, spreading the message to the trade and to consumers uh, about uh, the great foods that Irish farmers are producing. Now, one of the key issues that farmers tell us in AgriLand is that they're constantly being asked for proof, proof that they're delivering on sustainability, and particularly in relation to issues around climate. Why is that important that farmers have to show proof? Well, I think um, you can look at it in two ways, um, and, and I like to think about it as it's a great opportunity to actually quantify and give evidence to the positive things that farmers are doing. Uh, so, it, you know, it's a very positive story that, that we can tell because one of the things that, that I find when I go around the world and, and talk to, to customers is uh, they are very impressed by the work that the farming community and the agri-food industry working together uh, are, are, are doing and that we have collected through our sustainable assurance schemes and through Origin Green this body of evidence that can demonstrate that, that actually Irish farmers are, are working hard to try and improve the sustainability of Irish agriculture and, and food. And that's something that they are looking for. Uh, so, you know, there is demand. Uh, many of our customers have set targets themselves uh, outside of what the EU might have set. Um, so they're looking for suppliers who are able to, to fulfil on, on, on that commitment. And we're able to tell a very convincing story. Is there a lot of bureaucracy, though, now, red tape for farmers, do you think? It's certainly changing, there's no doubt about that. Uh, there is a need to have more, more records, but we work very hard to try and make sure that we can try and collect data in a most efficient way. And you know, one of the things that we, we try and do is, is that if data is recorded once, that it doesn't have to be recorded a second time. And we've, we've always worked on trying to find ways to make sure that the, if you like, the time at inspection in front of the farmer is minimised. Uh, and, and again, there is there's scope where some of the uh, data can be recorded outside of, of the audit. So we're all the time and open to feedback to trying to, to make sure that we can get uh, that as efficiently and as, as not as invasive on the farmer as possible. And do you think there is a trust issue there? Do you think it's important that, you know, farmers are saying to us, oh, we're always asked for proof. Do people not trust what we're doing? I don't think it's, I, I think it's, it's, it's about um, demonstrating that. Um, you know, I, I understand that, and we get this all the time, that there, you know, farmers might feel a bit anxious about a, a farm inspection. But when you go back to them afterwards and say, how was it? They said, oh, it was great. You know what I mean? And, and uh, so I, I can understand, no, <laughs> nobody likes getting, getting examined, if you like. So I can understand a little bit of stress around that. But uh, in fact, when they go through the experience, it's, it's more positive. And, you know, the, the, the proof is in, in, in the pudding insofar as that uh, the, you know, the uh, number of farmers who, who get through the, 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 the process uh, with flying colours is, is very, very high. So I think uh, it's, it's more to be something that we should be proud of rather than something we, sh we should fear. And are there likely to be more changes coming? Are there likely to be more demands on farmers to deliver proof of what they're doing? Well, I think, I think the, the request is changing. The asks are changing. Um, we, uh, you know, our, our schemes are accredited schemes. They, they need to be revised every, uh, periodically. So we're doing that at the moment. But it's important that uh, people understand that the, the standards that we, we develop are co-developed with all the stakeholders. And that's, you know, that's one of the requirements of accreditation, that you must include everybody who has an interest in the process to be represented. They have their voice, they, they express themselves. And what we, what, we, what we come up with is a consensus document, bearing in mind what's, what's uh, appropriate to find out at farm level, with also what the demands from the marketplace is. Because ultimately, this is about building the case so that uh, our customers around the world are looking for certain assurances and that we're able to give them to them. 
And obviously, Chagas is a stakeholder there. You work very closely with farmers. What is the direction of travel for farmers, do you think? Uh, thanks, Francis. So look, um, yeah, we work very closely with farmers. We have actual client relationships with over 40,000 farmers. But you know, the, the other farmers, the, lots of them would come to our events and open days and so on. So look, we, we have very um, good connection with, with farmers. And I suppose, look, the, the direction of travel for the last couple of years has sustainability, in particular the environmental sustainability, has, has become very, very uh, important. And whether that's water quality or whether it's climate change or biodiversity, that's, that's very high on the agenda, I suppose, on, on the policy makers, and that's translating into you know, the work we have to do with yeah. farmers then. But look, we're, we're always really conscious, and I think it's, you know, it's very important to say sustainability doesn't stop at environment. Sustainability is also about making sure that farmers can make a living from, from their farm, that we, we can optimise and maximise the profitability, and also, you know, the social side of sustainability. And that's everything from, you know, work-life balance and health and safety, uh, through to the social licence to farm and all of that. So look, sustainability is a rounded term. And uh, you can't just pick out one bit of it and say that's what we're going to focus on. So we're very focused on, on those three aspects of sustainability. And obviously the landscape, so to speak, is constantly changing. Does Tragus always get it right? Well, look, um, I suppose, I, I don't know whether we always get it right. Other people can, can probably answer that. I think we, we're fairly much um, alive to what's, what are the important issues. You know, we've, we've, um, we've a, a big program of work addressing both water quality. That's through the, the ASAP program. That's the, where we have over 30 advisors working with ourselves and the co-ops and, and Law Pro, working with individual farmers around water quality. We are putting in place a new climate programme. We've just started, allocated over 20 advisors to that. It's a, we've, we have a collaboration with, with Borbia and Irish Cattle Breeding Federation around that in terms of the data and not asking farmers for the same data again. So we've, we've big programmes there, you know, we've, we've put extra resources into organics because of the, 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 the new organic scheme and, and actually a lot of interest from farmers in that. So look, we, we try to be as responsive as we can to the issues that are emerging and that farmers have to deal with. And obviously try to be ahead of it in terms of, of the research and, you know, that we, we have the answers there. We have at least uh, something that can point farmers to the way forward whenever that, that, that information is needed. And obviously one key issue for for both organisations is around calf welfare. Now we expect to see that built into maybe some of the schemes in Ward Bia, but also it's an issue that you've been talking about, not just today or this year, it, it's yeah. been a constant issue. Look, ca calf welfare is really important, both from the point of view of you know, the welfare of the animal, the perception people have of, of, of the industry, the perception we'll say consumers have of the industry, but also it's really important for the performance of, of calves and their subsequent lifetime performance, whether that's in, going into the beef industry or, or into the dairy industry. So we've, we've had for, for many, many, many years a focus on, on good rearing of, of calves and the proper standards and the proper things that you need to do to rear calves. So for instance, we've been running calf health, calf health seminars with Animal Health Ireland probably for the last 10 years. We do, you know, I, I, about 10 of those uh, every springtime, different locations around the country. So, so that's a very important issue for, for us, you know, the, the the rearing of the calves, but yeah. as well as that, you've got to go back before the calf is born, I think. And you know, a lot of the issues we, we have with calves that are, you know, low value, uh, we're trying to address those through sex semen yeah. to reduce the number of male dairy calves that are born. But also then in terms of the, 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 the quality of beef cross calves from the dairy herd, the dairy beef index that we developed in collaboration with ICBF. And we have a program then called the Dairy Beef 500 program, which is around rearing those calves uh, through, through, through to beef. So, look, we're, we're, we're trying focus, to address that through yeah. multiple uh, directions. Yeah, and obviously on your Origin Green programme, a, a, a flagship programme for Board Bia, you're selling Ireland, it's this green producer. Is that also a very is important issue when we talk about welfare, when we talk about water quality, whenever you're selling that message about Ireland and produce, how crucial is that? Well, you, you mentioned in, in one of the questions earlier about, you know, about trust. So there's a correlation between trust and reputation. So we're trying to build the reputation uh, of, of Irish uh, agri-food products, and therefore we have there's a balance to be to be, to be struck there. So uh, of course, welfare is important, and of course, uh, water quality uh, is is important. And it's it's never about one single issue. It's not, you know, it, it's always uh, we, we have to demonstrate the progress we're making on our carbon emissions, but also on our water quality uh, and also on welfare. They're, they're, they're interchangeable. And I know sometimes that, that, that it comes across as all of these different demands made, made, made on, on producers. 
But we, we, we are questioned on these, uh, on these things, uh, and different markets have different uh, emphasis on these things. So, you know, uh, in, in the Dutch market, for example, they have a very big uh, interest in animal welfare. Uh, so that's something that is going to be demanded of from our customers there. Um, water quality is, is important. Obviously, we, we market uh, Irish food on the basis of its, its environment and the cleanliness of it. So all of these things are, come into play. Yeah. And of course, a key issue for farmers today at the Ploughing Championship is nitrates, the derogation. Where do you think we're headed? Well, look, um, we've had uh, you know, the Minister and the Commissioner saying we're, you know, that the review has taken place and that as a result, Ireland is heading to 220 for, for large areas of the country. And you know, I suppose the, the fine tuning of that map still has to take place where exactly the boundaries of it are. And, um, I think uh, you know, the, the job for us now as an advisory organisation will be to work with the farmers that are affected, see how does it affect their individual uh, situation and what for them are the best things that they can do on their individual farm because there's not a one-size-fits-all solution here and different, different um, responses will, will, be best or will, will be best on different farms. So that's the job we, we will have now over the next couple of months is working with farmers that are uh, looking at uh, having to reduce down to 220 and working out the best plan for them to to, but to, to minimise the impact on their profitability, and there's no, you know, we can't sugarcoat it. This will uh, impact on profitability of dairy farms that have to reduce their, their stocking rate. Um, so trying to do that in, in the least uh, painful way possible for them, but also in a way that the changes will actually contribute to, to improving water quality. Yeah, and it's, it's not just a farmer-only problem, sure it isn't. It impacts across the sector because it will have a knock-on effect. Yeah. Well, I, I Ab absolutely. Uh, I, I think there, there's, there's two dimensions to this, really. It's, there is an increasing push for greater uh, environmental legislation, greater demands in terms of water quality, and, and that is going to have an impact, as Frank said. So from our perspective, we have to look then at how we try and, and extract more value per, per unit out of the marketplace. That's a longer term play, but that's ultimately where, where, where that's going to head. Do you think there is an issue that people perhaps do not understand or are aware of what farmers are already doing? I, I think there's uh, uh, you know, a job of work for all of us to do to try and demonstrate the really heavy initiatives that farmers are undertaking, this, the, their strong commitment to do that. We, we know that. Um, I, people in Chagas know that. We have the evidence of it in, in from, from all the data that we collect from farms. There's an awful lot of, of, of good things happening. Um, and I think it's really important, actually, that that message uh, and hopefully, you know, something like the ploughing that gets national attention on, on farming is an opportunity to, to demonstrate the really positive things. Because I, I think farmers are frustrated that they're sometimes cast in this, in, in this light that they're uh, against some of this thing, when in fact they're not. Yeah. There are, though, a lot of demands on farmers now, even more so sort of now whenever we see the issues around climate and the challenges that mm. lie ahead. Do you feel that there is enough investment going in the ground to support farmers on that? Do you think that there's more needs to be done there? Yeah, look, there's a huge amount being asked of farmers now to, to address in, in running their business. A huge, a huge um, transformation is being asked of, of farmers in terms of how, how they run their business. And I suppose, you know, we're, we're there to provide advice and, and to do the research to see what are the best measures to take and the best ways to change the system. But look, there's a big job of, of the whole of industry, I think, to support farmers in this. The, the, the processors who buy products of farmers, you know, have a role to play in this in terms of, you know, providing incentives to people that do actually take on new initiatives and, and new changes on their farms. And, and also the policymakers have a job here. And I suppose there's also, uh, you know, a job for all of us to try to explain the complexity of these things, you know, like the nitrates, it's, it, it's not a simple thing, right, we'll, we'll cut the stocking rate and water quality improves. You, you put your money in and you take your money but out. that's not what Chagas research is fine. Either. No, sure that's what I'm saying. It's a complex issue. And I think um, probably what frustrates farmers is that maybe people think it is a simple answer and a simple lever. We, we pull the stocking rate lever and we get better water quality. You know, there's, for a start, it's not as simple as that. Yeah. You know, it's how, it's, it's how those stocking rate adjustments are made. But I suppose the, the, there are other things that, that can be done on farms that will, will lead to improvements in water quality. And, and that's maybe some of the frustration that's there that farmers would say, well, look, I've, I've done these things. I've done them in the last year. And uh, I know our targets are telling me they're going to improve water quality 
but why haven't we waited for that? And look, that's, that's I suppose, part of the frustration that, 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 that is there with farmers, that those measures didn't get a chance to, to work. for us to see the impact yeah. of them. But look, um, hopefully the, the, those measures are going to be very important, uh, that we do implement them, because um, I think it is, you know, we have to go back and say we, we do need to improve our water quality. So those measures are, are the measures that will contribute uh, to doing that. Do you think, though, it's a we are on the cusp of a change in how we farm in Ireland? I think we're in the middle of a change. You know, we, as long as I've been around it, I've been around a good while now, uh, farming has changed an awful lot. It's, it's very different now than it was 10 years ago or 20 years ago. So, look, I think we are on a, on a journey where uh, more um, care is taken in terms of how we, we impact on the environment. So we see huge change in terms of the, the way farmers are fertilising their, their fields. You know, they're making far better use of slurry. That's true, better timing of when they put it out, and also using low emissions um, uh, application equipment, which gets better value out of that slurry. We see a huge reduction in the amount of, uh, fer in, in particular, nitrogen fertiliser being used, probably down about 30% over the last two years. So farmers have adjusted their systems to cope with that, and they, they've, they've been able to do that by things like putting on more lime because it frees up soil nitrogen, the slow emission slurry spraying, they're getting more value out of their organic manures. They're putting in clover, both white clover for grazing swards and red clover for silage swards. And they're a bit more judicious in how they use the, the nitrogen. So, you know, instead of, um, well, the regulation has caught up with this, but a lot of farmers had moved away from, from mid-January nitrogen to waiting until February when grass growth was, was better. That's now a regulation. So, so farmers, I think, are on that journey of change and have done a huge amount in terms of adjusting and adapting their system so that they will have less impact on the environment. And Jim, how much of that has been driven by the market too, though? Well, I think there's, there's um, you know, huge regulatory change, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, many of the big customers of Irish food have their own targets uh, and they want to achieve net zero by some of them by 2035, 2040. So they are looking to, to the marketplace to see how that can be achieved. And they're realizing, obviously, that some of that is, is, has to come from primary production from farmers. So uh, this is something that is getting, as you know, once upon a time, 2030 seemed like a long time away. Yeah. Now it's, the, the, it, it's, it's narrowing and people, there's a, a greater urgency. So I think, you know, the comment that, that Frank was making earlier that, you know, there's always been a time of change. I think what's different now maybe is that uh, it's the pace and the scale of change has probably, has probably changed. And, and, you know, technology is, is, is moving quickly all the time as well. And what would you say Irish farmers need to get better at? Well, look, um, I suppose all of us, we could say you need to get better at something, but Irish farmers, I'd start that by saying Irish farms do a really good job. You know, we, we produce some of the best quality food in the world. We do it in a very sustainable way. And um, it's, it's not an industry that throws a lot of profit at you. So farmers have to be very careful in how, how they run their business. I suppose, look, I go back to what I said at the start. It is about the, the impact in the environment. We have to get better maybe at, at uh, the decision making that we, we make around how, how our business are going to impact on the environment. But look, farmers are, I think, very much up for that challenge. There's a lot of, lot of supports, whether it's through Chagosk or other organisations, or via the, the quality assurance schemes now put a big focus on that. So I think the supports are there. I think farmers uh, need encouragement uh, rather than being bet into it. And um, uh, we're certainly uh, open for business for helping farmers on that change. And where would you see Irish farming in five years' time? I would see Irish farm, farming, you know, it's very hard to crystal ball gaze around how markets will develop, but look, I think the, the fundamentals, as we say, are sound, you know, that we produce a, a product, uh, mainly dairy and meat, that's in high demand, growing demand. Uh, we're seen as a good place to produce that. So I think um, that demand is going to remain there. And I think if we can adapt our systems to stay ahead of the posse in terms of our environmental credentials, there's always going to be a very strong market for Irish dairy and beef produce. So I think farmers will have a, a good future ahead of them in that. Certainly, yes, there, there's, there's changes uh, th that are going to be made. Uh, but look, fundamentally, I think we're in the business of, of food production and we're going to stay in that business. And Jim, you're optimistic for the future too? I am optimistic because I think farmers have always been shown that they're able to adapt. And I think that in five years' time, they will have demonstrators and, and we'll have the evidence to show the positive change that made, uh, have been made. And that will be encouraging to the marketplace, but also to the farming community. And will encourage them to, to, to do more uh, and, and to do that better. Jim O'Toole, Chief Executive of Board BIA and Frank O'Mara from Chagas. Thank you very much for joining Thanks, us. Thanks, Francis. Thank, Thank you. you.